Emma Reynolds. Thank you, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I will keep to exactly eight minutes. And I want to thank the Right Honourable Lady for her contribution, which I found to be incredibly thoughtful, and I agreed with every single word that she said. But I want to pay a particular special tribute to my Right Honourable Friend uh, for Camberwell and, and Peckham, mm-hmm. not only for bringing forward these proposals today and, and doing so much work on this issue, but for all the work that she's done since she joined this House many years ago. I don't, I don't know how many it's been, but I know she is the mother of the House. But all the work she's done to make sure that we have greater gender equality in our country and in our Parliament. And we have made huge progress in the time that she's been an MP, thanks to her work. But as today's motion demonstrates, we still have quite some way to go. I want to just uh, recount what happened in 2017. My husband and I were expecting a baby in April, and we were hoping for a quiet year on the work front, let's say. (laughs) Um, We thought, this is great. Theo will be, uh, well, he wasn't Theo at the time, the bump uh, will be around three years old at the time of the next election, because it seemed that the Prime Minister was absolutely determined to stay with us and to, you know, really respect the Fixed Term Parliament Act. So I gave birth uh, on... uh, two o'clock in the morning on Good Friday and as those of you who have been there before me know it is a very physically demanding and tiring process and four days later I was um, lying on my bed at home in the morning uh, breastfeeding baby Theo and uh, my mother um, actually used a few expletives while looking at her phone and I said what's happened and she said the Prime Minister's called an election. And I, I said, no, 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 I can't be right. You know, she, was, she was adamant she wasn't going to do that. Unlike some of you here who were watching the podium and noticing that there, weren't any, there wasn't any writing on there, I didn't even know she was making a statement. And um, my husband came in and, and my mum said, you know, Richard, there's going to be an election. And he said, Emma, you have to check this straight away. I don't believe it. Uh, and we were in a state of disbelief for quite some hours, days and, and weeks, actually. And we wondered how on earth we were going to cope with a, a newborn, this brand new little person that we had in our lives, who we were already kind of struggling to cope with during the night because he was up most of the night. And that we had to do that and organise an election campaign as well. So it was a busy time and I want to thank uh, the vast majority of my constituents who were so supportive and I have lost count of the number of messages and cards and the number of people when we were on the doorstep who asked about how I was but also about how baby Theo was getting on. Um, I have to say there were a small handful of people who said to me that once the election was called they assumed that I would not stand again. And I politely said to them, would you ask the same question if my husband was the MP? Mm -hmm. And the answer didn't come back because the answer was obvious. Of course they would not. I believe that new mums and new dads in this place should have the same rights that we have legislated for for men and women across our country. I can't believe in a way that we're dragging our feet on this, given that we have legislated to make such marked improvements in the last few years. I'm extremely grateful. I've really enjoyed listening to her experiences. I've just uh, <laughs> I've gone onto the Procedure Committee and attended yesterday for the first time, and it is on our agenda to have a, an investigation and make a report on this, because I think it's a very, very important issue that's been raised today by uh, colleagues, and so I thought I'd like to put on record that we are going to be looking at that. The Honourable Member, and I urge him to do so quickly because there are various uh, (laughs) colleagues who have a very tight deadline that you should be working to, (laughs) as we have already discussed. And and I want to put on record my thanks to my husband's employer because, as members of this House will know, um, new dads do have a right to shared parental leave, but they have to give several weeks' notice of taking that leave. And it happens to be eight weeks' notice, which is about the same time as an election campaign. Uh, so thankfully, his employer agreed to bring his parental leave forward, because had my husband been working full-time uh, at the same time as me running the campaign, I'm not sure we would have been able to cope. So I'm really, really grateful to them for doing that. And I would encourage new dads to take up that right because I do think it is a crying shame as I said in the intervention earlier 
that only 5% at the moment do take up that right. Um, after the election, and we did get through it, and, and I did start campaigning after about, well, actually, uh, Richard Angel, who some of you will, have know, will all know, a week after I gave birth, brought a whole group of people to come and help. And the local paper sent a snapper, and then one of the Sunday papers also sent a photographer, and they came to my office, and I'd given birth literally a week before, and baby Theo was there, and then he peed everywhere, and uh, anyway, <laughs> apart from that, um, uh, one of my party members said, oh yeah, that's called the hosepipe trick, and I said, oh right, I haven't heard that before, but now I'm experienced in it. But I was having this meeting to G up my members, and um, the photographer were there and they got a photo of me and baby Theo and I was feeling pretty exhausted but they insisted on joining me on the campaign trail and little did they know I didn't really want to go on the campaign trail because I was still pretty tired and I think if I did it again I'd have the experience to say no I've come to do the members meeting and to G everybody up and I'm going home but I didn't and I went out campaigning uh, seven days after giving birth and I did suffer for it physically um, and I, then I had a rest but we had all the deadlines and people will know even before the short campaign there's deadlines for letters and leaflets and as much stuff as you can basically get out um, especially given it was such a short campaign and well, barely a, I will I thank my humble friend for giving way and the words she's just said have just just made me feel so uncomfortable because it's actually illegal to yeah. work for two weeks after giving birth and the situation she describes is just intolerable we really do have to do something about oh, this well yeah. I, I admit i broke the law and i, I shouldn't have um, I, I must say the motion before us today obviously wouldn't help me in my situation and there were other members here present who were in the same situation there were three of us in fact who were no, new mums when the election uh, was called. I, I, I suspect there isn't anything that can be done when that happens. We were very, very lucky, unlucky, sorry, unlucky in the timing. Um, but I do think there's something that can be done for after that because that's what I'm coming on to next. So we had the election, I managed to retain my seat, but in the weeks after polling day, um, in the weeks after polling day, I was required to come in and swear in, otherwise I wouldn't get paid. I was required to come in and vote on the Queen's speech. Uh, I was asked to come in to vote on uh, the select committee chairs, which I really wanted to do because they usually endure for five years. Let's see what happens. Um, uh, and I didn't have a say on that. I, in, in fact, emailed uh, Mr. Speaker and he was very sympathetic, but there wasn't much he could do because none of this is in place. And as so many um, honourable members have said in this debate before me, I think it is only right that our constituents um, are represented in this place and we should have the choice as to whether to appoint a colleague to vote on our behalf. Now, we, I know some colleagues are uncomfortable with this because they would only want to be the ones voting. Well, that's why, and I think the uh, Right Honourable Lady is, is very, uh, has taken this on board, it should be a choice. It's an option. If you become a new mum or a new dad, you should be able to appoint a proxy for the time that you uh, are on leave. Um, I must say I am hugely grateful to the WHIPS officers, uh, particularly my honourable friend for Alan and Deeside, who has been so brilliantly flexible, not only when after the election I had given birth, but when I was pregnant, because it's very tiring bobbing in this place, and I say this to <laughs> colleagues, when you're really big. Uh, it was a great pleasure to come back in January and be able to bob without the bump. Um, but the WHIPS offices, in all seriousness, I think there has been a huge amount of progress made. I have spoken to many colleagues who had babies um, 10, 20 years ago, and indeed uh, yourself, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, when you didn't really have uh, the kind of leave that we have been granted. But as my right honourable friend has said, we should not have to ask for it. This should be our right. And in other workplaces, you don't have to ask. You have the right to it. So we are dragging our feet. And I just also want to echo what was said earlier by um, uh, one of my uh, honourable friends uh, for Liverpool... Wavertree, uh, who talked about the website they work for you. I emailed them um, just before going on maternity leave to see if they would reflect on their website mm. uh, the fact that uh, I was going to be on leave. And they sort of fobbed me off, frankly. They said they'd have a look at it, and we pestered them, and nothing came back. Mm. And I do think that they should consider uh, qualifying it on their website because many of us have been criticised by national newspapers yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, it, and it is not right it's reputationally damaging yeah. whether they publish an apology later on or not yeah. it is a damage to your reputation and we should not be in that position um, 
I, in, in, finally, in conclusion, I just want to pay tribute to all of the right honourable and honourable uh, members who have gone before me. And, and I want to single out a few people. Not only you, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, and obviously the right honourable member for Campbell and Peckham, but I want to also um, pay tribute and say thanks to my right honourable friend for Normanton, Pantofrat, Castleford and Nottingley, who was the first minister uh, to uh, give birth in office. And also I want to say um, I've been inspired by many other colleagues since, such as my right honourable friend for Leeds West, who has had two babies while she was in the ca uh, shadow cabinet. Yeah. It, this is really yeah. tough, juggling family life and being an MP is really tough, but I love both of them. And I say to young women out there, don't be deterred, come in and do it. No. Yeah. Yeah.